Welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Fatima Lada. I'm a clinical pharmacist specialist for oncology and palliative care from Canada. I'm going to be reviewing tramadol pharmacology with you today. So as we've discussed uh, the benefits of tramadol for pain management in the earlier series of the lectures, tramadol has both opioid and non-opioid properties. Pharmacologically speaking, it is a racemic mixture of tramadol positive, which is the U-opioid receptor agonist, uh, weak uh, mu opioid activity, as well as serotonin reuptake inhibition activity. The levotramadol, or the minus that you see here, it has the noradrenaline reuptake inhibitor activity. And tramadol itself has an active metabolite, O-desmethyltramadol. The combination of these factors com uh, are combined to result in the pain relief we see with the use of tramadol in patients. So tramadol is metabolized through the CYP2D6 pathway from the in the liver, and this active metabolite, we'll refer to it as M1, is in fact what we will focus on. The problem with tramadol um, through this mechanism is CYP2D6 as an enzyme itself is subject to genetic polymorphisms. That means if there's um, slow metabolizers of tramadol, it, it will restrict them to the SNRI effect only. However, if someone is a fast metabolizer because of their CYP2D6 genetic polymorphism, they will have opioid as well as SNRI effects. Therefore, it becomes highly unpredictable within specific populations, such as Caucasians, Africans, Greek, Hungarians. Interestingly enough, within the uh, Indian population, South Asian populations, um, Southeast Asian populations, we find that there is less likelihood of genetic polymorphisms, and therefore we can optimize the use of tramadol for opioid as well as SNRI effects. When we're looking at conversions for tramadol, tramadol is available as oral as well as IV formulations, and we generally consider it one-to-one -one, uh, conversion. However, when we're looking at morphine equivalents, tramadol can generally be considered at 10 to one. Therefore, 100 milligrams of tramadol is generally equated to 10 milligrams of oral morphine. When we consider that the maximum total daily dose of tramadol is 400 milligrams per day, that works out to approximate equivalents of 40 milligrams per day of morphine. So now I'd like to review a little bit of tramadol side effects. Uh, tramadol, because of its uh, mechanism through the serotonergic uh, properties, is a uh, risk for serotonin syndrome um, is something that should be considered. The diagram to the right of the screen will identify common signs and symptoms of serotonin syndrome that uh, grade from mild to full-blown to severe symptoms. And just a refresher and a reminder for those of you who may already know about serotonin syndrome, um, this may be a quick reference um, diagram that would be handy. Another important side effect that many of you may not think about with tramadol are seizures. Seizures in particular are not related to the serotonin syndrome toxicity. It is an independent risk factor and usually occurs if doses greater than 100 milligrams per dose are provided or if the total daily dose of tramadol exceeds 1500 milligrams per day. Tramadol also has side effects similar to those of opioids. As you recall, it has effects on the mu receptors within the body. So the same side effects such as constipation, drowsiness, um, nausea and vomiting, et cetera, may be potential uh, side effects with tramadol. So one thing to remember is the Hunter serotonin toxicity criteria. So this is a algorithm that one could use to identify whether or not a patient is experiencing uh, serotonin syndrome. And I find this is helpful to refresh everyone's memory on every so often, as we may not be thinking about this as we're utilizing tramadol for pain relief, but it is important to, important to consider because of the serotonergic properties of, of tramadol. 
In terms of drug interactions, as we know, tramadol being metabolized by CYP2D6, it will be subject to inhibitors of CYP2D6. As a result of inhibition of CYP2D6, we may see reduced opioid analgesic effect because there is no metabolism occurring, and we may see SNRI effects increase as well because there's alternative um, pathways being utilized for the racemic uh, alternative of tramadol. There's also increased risk of, in, of serotonin syndrome and seizure risk when other SSRIs or other serotonergic drugs such as fluoxetine, citalopram, sertraline, uh, even fentanyl uh, that might be added into drug therapy. Uh, and that's something to be aware of. TCA, such as amitriptyline, which are commonly used as adjunct um, for pain management or for, um, for mood management in our patient population, that would be important to remember. On Downsyndrome is also a commonly available drug um, affecting serotonin mechanisms for nausea and vomiting. And that is also something to keep in mind when used in combination with tramadol, the increased risk of serotonin syndrome as a result. Within pregnancy and lactation, tramadol can be used. It's important to note that there is low excretion into breast milk. No adverse effects in infants have been identified. However, it is recommended to monitor for sleepiness. There may potentially be an increase in prolactin levels in, um, in mothers as well. So things to be aware of, and if possible, monitoring is recommended. So, a common question is what to do when pain is resistant to opioids. So we have a document that will be provided um, uh, as a Word document, and this is just a quick snapshot of what this looks like. Just as suggestions of what are alternatives to use uh, when opioids are not available or if the pain itself is resistant to opioids and there is nece necessity to add on <clears throat> adjuvant drug therapy such as tramadol or alternative medications that are non-opioid. So if anyone has any questions, please feel free to reach out to our faculty and we're, we'll be happy to answer any of those questions. Thank you very much.